Okay, let's get started. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, first is approval of the minutes uh, from the one nine twenty three meeting. I didn't have any changes. On the Do we have consensus on that. Yep, they look good to me. Two, three, four, five. Okay, we're good on the on the notes. Perfect. Um, action items: uh, the biological opinion. Um, I thought it'll be here on the 6th to give us an update. Carol was not able to make it today. She had a booked up calendar. So I did talk to them on Friday, though. Um, so we have had a meeting with them about some changes uh, related to some temporary work. Uh, they did get a chance to meet this week on Thursday with FHWA, uh, Cindy Callahan. Um, got some information back from her. Uh, they gave us a list of things that we need to update. So WSP is working on those updates. Um, as soon as they get those back to uh, Cindy, then she will set up or to cash with ODOT. Then they will set up a meeting with Cindy with FHWA. She will tell us then how she wants them to update either the AIS or do just a memo. Uh, but she wants to see those updated documents, which it's like updated tables and, and figures. Um, and she'll tell us whether or not she wants us to actually update the EIS or just do a amendment to that. Um, so we should know that next week. Uh, well, hopefully it's just a, uh, an attached document to it. Yep. And I did ask them whether or not this was the final comments or final pieces that we needed to finish out the BO. The answer I got back was this is the latest, the final on the piece that they have submitted. So they are piece, they're submitting pieces of it to NIMS and NOAA. Um, I did not get a response back of how many additional pieces there are, but this was the comments on the piece that they're currently submitting. So they're piecemealing it in hopes that when the whole thing gets there, we don't get a bunch of comments at the end. It'll it'll just finish. Um, how big so was the document to start with? I don't have those answers. I have not. I asked and did not get clarification on okay. like exactly what the comments are. It's it's kind of a so we haven't even the conversation seen the there. draft of the BO. I'm sorry? We haven't even seen the draft no, of the BO. We haven't seen the comments. We haven't seen the draft. We haven't seen any of that. All we've gotten was, we need this information. We need you to address this, this situation. We've done that. We've, we're in the process of getting it. And then they're going to take that back to Cindy. Um, and then we, we see what the next review piece they do is. So we're between zero and 100%. <laughs> maybe 25 that's a fair assessment. <laughs> so yeah i mean i'm sorry i don't have better but that's that's what we've got have you ever come across this i i haven't i haven't had to deal with a lot of nymphs like this okay. so no, I, i'm not um I, the closest we did was a waterline project but that was um usda or d right okay i don't think it's i don't think it's unusual for the biological opinion to not be distributed in advance that's pretty that, from what I we're think hearing, it's it's ridiculous not, this is so how long it's taken. I don't like the process, but it seems to be the process. Well, I think like some of us need to think about the next step if we don't see action coming through here. Look, I will say the good thing is, is that I have had twice now where ODOT has actually reached out and contacted us about updates and here's what we're doing. And we had a meeting and this is the next step. So that is a big improvement over previous. Um, so I'm encouraged that they're actually calling us and reaching out to us. So I think that's, you know, a positive sign that we're moving. But if ODOT is driving the process, they're the ones who are feeding nymphs the pieces. So they should be able to tell us how much they fed and what the whole thing looks like, right? So we should be, you should be able to get those answers from ODOT. You don't have to go to the feds for that. Correct. ODOT, I would think, has that information. Okay. Whether we they will share that information, I've not been able to get that information yet. I asked what else was left, and I said they were said were this is for this piece, and then we've got a couple other pieces. Yep. There was not a real clear what the other pieces were. So that's that's the biological assessment. Depending. Where are we on the was it F one o the the one o six MOA um, yep. that needs the MO, the memorandum of agreement mailed sent to the Yakima because they need to sign off that everything has been addressed either between the treaty MOA 
and the uh, 106 MOA, and once they do that, then they can move the the uh, 106 forward. But they need to sign off in Yakima. So well, we don't need all four treaty tribes. No, just they just need Yakima to respond back that they their concerns were addressed. Um, so I asked Roy last week. He thought that would go this week to Yakima. I said it would go this week. Could, Yakima. could you? So, I know you will stay yeah. on it and let us know yeah. when it actually went. Yep. So Yakima has not had a chance to review the MOA that we've sent. Not the treaty MOA. No. Okay. Oh, you got two of them here now. Yeah. You got the ones. you got the architectural piece of it. Cultural resources, which is the one hundred six right. MOA. That one they've seen. Yeah, but but the actual treaty, treaty MOA they MOA have not, they have not seen, been, uh, and that's the one that's in our documents, right? That is correct. And so that treaty MOA, have we seen? Is this off of a template that others have used? Yes. That have been through the Akamos? Yes. Uh, I don't remember if the Akamo was a part of. It was Puyallup and the muckle shoot up in washington okay so uh, why is it, it taking so long for them because they've already approved it to get it to the yakimas do they need a stamp i'll buy a friggin' stamp if that's what we need i don't have the answer i guess that. my my issues come when i was looking at the the, the actual moa and the way it was written it might work for the few hours but anything with regards to their sovereignty and yeah. that that the Yakimas are very very serious on that and I was we, reading through it and I was like <laughs> this is an interesting place to start the conversation yeah we have been told that that probably will come out okay um we just it's a starting point so but we we've heard that too that they probably will not agree to that so but we wanted to start somewhere so, and there's it's some other to mark up no than to come up start with a blank sheet of paper yeah yeah. So, and that's part of the discussion with you, Matilda, tomorrow is that, look, this is a starting point. We know there's blanks in there. We know there's things in there that we want to have negotiations or discussions about because some of it, we just don't have all the detail and we need their input on. So know, did, did we ever get from CrickFit who actually is out there what and what tribes they're from? And uh, that's part of what we're hoping to do through the negotiations. We did get fish counts. And we know roughly what the catch is during the different seasons. Um, we don't have for that area or for the whole area? for the zone. Is it six or sixty zone six? Zone six. So the whole Bonneville pool. There's a bigger pool, and then there's a smaller. Is it sixty and then sixty one? Sixty one. So there's a bigger area, and then there's a subset of that which I think is sixty or sixty one, and we have to fish within that window. Um, but that's outside our exclusion zone, correct? No, that's what would be within the area of our school exclusion zone. It includes it, but includes so it goes from like the bottom hill to the dowels. I think is that the bottom hill pool. Well, no, that's the bigger one, okay. and then we have a smaller one that says between this marker and this marker, here's the catch between those two markers, and that's bigger than our exclusion zone, correct? Yes. Yeah. How much bigger than our exclusion? Uh, zone? I, I can get that for you. I don't know that off the top of my head. What the total difference is between them, but it, but again, that what we're trying to get is the exclusion zone. They can still fish outside, outside of the exclusion that. zone. Correct. Yeah, it was it was like three percent or, or less of the total area. Yeah, yeah. I can send you the summary we got. So we were able to pull the historic catches, and it tells you where the areas are, and we were able to run numbers on. Okay, here's what the percentages are of the total area. So Sorry. I can forward you that. You can Thank take a look at it. Okay. Can everybody on uh, on uh, Zoom? Can everybody hear us? Okay. I can hear you guys fine. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Two point two of the total. Two point two of the total, and it's zone sixty one. And then we have the different types of fish, and then we have the uh, different seasons: spring, fall, uh, runs, okay. and catch. All right. Let's keep going. All right. Um, the uh, CFA, let's cover that when we get to that topic in the informational items. And then the next one is communications. So I'm going to have JLA, Jessica, and Alice. I think Alice is going to present and walk you through some of the communications topics. Hi, everyone. 
Jess Pickle is also here. She's also here to jump in. Uh, there she is. Hi. Um, in case I forgot anything. So we're going to go over, let me share my screen here. Oh, can you enable participant screen sharing, Mike? You able to do that? Okay, you should be able to now. Okay. Great. Okay, can everyone see this? Yep. yep. Okay, great. So we're going to go over uh, the communications plan for basically now through March. Um, just want to stress before we get into anything that these are always subject to change. Um, things might come up, we might push things around. So this is as best as we can tell right now. I also want to let you all know that I have a very sick three-year-old like five feet away from me who's <laughs> watching a cartoon. So I might have to pause and have Jess jump in, but she seems okay right now. Um, so real quick, uh, let me just go to our agenda. So today we're just going to talk about the goals of our outreach. We're going to talk about the tools that we're going to use. Um, roles and workflow, which this is a first pass at it. We got a lot of people that we need to make sure um, see these things and are okay with it. Um, so we wanna make sure that we got that right. Um, and then we're just gonna briefly go over top line messages for January through March. I realize it is January 23rd. So some of that stuff has already gone out. Um, and some of that uh, we will be getting out in the next week. Um, so just wanted to put that out there. Um, okay, so also jump in if you have any questions. Um, this is, I'm gonna throw a lot of information at you. A lot of this, a lot of this is, hold on a second, sweetie, I'll get you in just a minute. Um, a lot of this is stuff that is in the packet that you received. So if I go over this quickly, it should all be there as a reference, but feel free to stop me. So, uh, so goals, two things, two primary goals. Number one, repair and build trust with the community. Um, building, because we are a new entity, repairing just with sort of distrust with the port, sort of a lack of clarity about the project. Um, and then number two is to inform. So we're telling people what's happening, what we know, sometimes what we don't know, but what we will find out, um, that's part of this. And then the way that we do this is through transparency and routine, regular communications. So we're starting to build that trust. Uh, one of the tools that you'll see is trying to build email lists um, so that we can start to sort of build our own um, stakeholder outreach. Okay. Actually, you know what? I didn't even add uh, direct email outreach on here. Okay, so I just wanted to give a brief overview uh, on the media tools that we'll be using. So, uh, and just to FYI, Mike Shannon was like, what is earned media? So I'm just gonna give you a quick uh, 101 on what earned media is versus owned media. Um, so earned media is basically anything that you have to make a pitch. So typically that's like getting your story picked up, putting out press releases. It's called earned because you don't always get it. Um, you have to make sure that your story is good, that your pitch is good, um, and that it's interesting and relevant information for the newspaper or the media platform. So we have earned media divided into three big groups. We've got our local, um, which is the big ones are the Columbian, Columbia Gorge News, Mania Sentinel, Goldendale, we've got some radio stations, and then we've also got some tribal print radio and some digital outlets. Um, there's more to that. We have a more robust list, but these are kind of the big buckets. Um, for regional and state, it really it's kind of the big kind of Portland metro outlets, but OPB is some is a is a platform that does cover more kind of local regional stuff. So sometimes we might have a local group and then also include OPB in that. So OPB kind of floats. Um, but in the regional and state, we also have the Oregonian Pamplin Media, which are, I don't know if you're aware, but Pamplin Media has basically bought a lot of the sort of town newspapers. So um, Pamplin Media is a good way to get into sort of 
lots of little individual uh, communities, and then they own the Portland Tribune. Um, and then a lot of the television studio uh, studios like KGW, K2, etc. Um, and then we're also targeting media platforms in the capitals, both in Salem and Olympia. And then our owned media is this is stuff that we can put out whenever we own it, we can decide um, how to push it out. Owned media certainly works in tandem with earned media. Um, so that's our biggest platform is our website. That's going to become our primary source of information, um, followed by social media. We have decided to proceed with Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. For now, we are not going to touch Twitter. That might change depending on how things go with Twitter. But for now, we're going to leave that. Um, we're still going to kind of work in tandem with the port site. So that will sort of be one secondary tool that we'll use. And then we're developing our own um, email list for this project. And so that is a really effective way of doing direct outreach with our stakeholders. I will also say that a lot of media reps, journalists like to be on our email list. Um, so as we start to send these monthly updates, we may get some earned media from that. Um, so hopefully that will sort of become kind of our primary source of information. And then I just wanna to touch real quick on the website. Um, in December, I believe we sent a draft website out to the Bi-State Working Group. Thank you to those of us, those of you who sent feedback. Um, the URL, the website is hoodriverbridge.org. It is live, we did a soft launch. So we basically let it go live to make it easy for people to access it, to review it, but it's not been connected to anything. Um, and it is uh, not on the port site. We haven't pushed it out at all. So hopefully nobody is really looking at it besides people who are being sent the link, which is just basically within the project team and by state working group. Um, after, this, uh, after this meeting, we're gonna send it out again to this group to do one last review before we push it out. Um, so final edits are due by January 26th. And then we're hoping to do a full media release, full launch, January 30th, 31st, next week. And just, just a FYI, so from now through April, maybe even a bit later, the site is gonna be kind of a transition uh, with materials between the port and the new site. So there will be some duplication. We will be having some bi-state working group materials on this site that are the same on the port site. So until the new bridge authority is fully in place, we're gonna kind of make sure that we've got information in both places. Um, and then once the new bridge authority is fully engaged, um, we are going to, this website, the project website will essentially be the authority's website. Sorry, my husband is- pause real quick yeah. to see, I put a, note in the chat but um any questions about the website or who we're planning to how we're planning to engage media okay cool well, thanks you can always reach out if you yeah. have more okay so this is a lot of information this slide in particular is included in the packet of information that you received. So I'm gonna to try to go over this as quickly as possible. We really tried to work hard to take a first pass at understanding our team um, and who needs to see what. Um, if you see people that are missing, please let us know. Also just wanna let you know that this will probably change once the new bridge authority is formed. So this is kind of like roles right now for the next probably three to five months. Um, so content development is primarily with JLA. We're working with the project team, we're getting information, we're developing that content. Um, and then we're working with HNTV to make sure that our things are looking good. Um, draft and final review team is primarily Martha, I'm sorry, Marla Keither, uh, Mike Fox, Mike Shannon, Kevin, um, and Genevieve at the port, and then any sort of team leads, subject matter experts, they're gonna review it. Um, for final technical review is Mike Fox and Mike Shannon. Final messaging and tone is Marla. Um, we're gonna work really hard 
to get them on the phone and make sure that we've got full approval before anything goes out. Um, and then, so that's sort of the, the articles, the kind of quick stuff that goes out. Um, and then before that, what we're hoping to get into a rhythm is sending you these monthly communication strategies uh, to the Bi-State Working Group and to the port so that you've got some time to review them before we really start to develop those articles and that messaging. Um, and so for now, we're going to kind of begin to sort of have a little bit of distinction between what is the port's communication and what is the project's communication. So for all project new bridge related communications, it's going to be mostly the execution of that's going to be Jessica Pickle and myself at JLA. Um, existing bridge and tolling specific communication is going to stay with the port. So that's going to be primarily Genevieve um, until the new authority is in place. And then that will kind of see how that will we'll revisit that. Um, and then for right now, all public and media responses. So Genevieve is sending out press releases for now, officially, even though we're supporting her. And then the people that are responding are primarily Mike Shannon and Kevin Greenwood. We're going to be supporting them. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, again, it's in flux, but that's what we know for now. And then I just wanted to just highlight this work. Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, if you go back to the previous slide, just a yep. clarification. I think we've got to be real careful. The second to the last bullet. This existing bridge and tolling specific communications. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the comment until the HRWSBA is in effect. The, the key thing there is if this new entity or ourselves are saying that we need to change the tolls on the existing bridge, it has to go through the port. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if if HRWSBA, I'm going to get that down here pretty quick. If we're talking about future tolls after the new bridge is in place, mm -hmm. different animal. Yeah. So maybe we'll say future tolls. It's going to be the HR. Catherine, I see you have your hand raised. Did you want to make a comment? Yeah, it's um, it's it's basically about the the building trust goal that we have, oh, uh -huh. um, and a lot there's a lot of um, I'm just worried that by separating these things out about the the tolling and that kind of stuff and where the money is coming from for the existing bridge and the new bridge um, that that it might be confusing to people. Um, so. I know that they have to be integrated somehow, right? Mm -hmm. um, because mm -hmm. there that's where a lot of that trust building work needs to take place. Yeah, okay. We will make a note of that. Let's get to that when we get to the tolling discussions in sure. February and March. But yeah, I, I agree with your comment. I think we're, we're working through that. And in fact, we were literally just talking about that. Yeah, we were. Like an hour ago, <laughs> so yeah, thank you. Um, I, it also looks like uh, the city of Hood River has their hand up. Yes, thank you, Mayor Blackburn here. Um, Hood River Bridge as the website, uh, I understand the brevity is a, is a bonus for a website URL, but uh, it's not just the Hood River Bridge. Mm -hmm. We were also talking about that a little bit, Mayor, and um, we wanted to get a vanity url in place for the time being but we can always purchase another one um because we recognize that it is a by state bridge so um I, I mean it's one of those things where once you start adding in like hood river white salmon bridge dot it's mm -hmm. like too much so if there's like i think we need to get to a place where it's still short and snappy and people understand what we're talking about so if you have any ideas I, we'll take I them hate, i would hate to hear about it from senator king for example yeah i mean my, my recommendation is if we really are having heartburn about this it's probably better to purchase a new domain now um and not do something not change it in the future. It might delay the launch a little bit. It takes a little bit of time to get those domains set up, but it might be a little bit more pain in the immediate and less in the long term. Um, so that is a conversation we can have. Um, I mean, we could do, I guess, 
HRWS bridge. I don't know, we haven't really introduced that concept. I think that's one of the other challenges is that we haven't introduced kind of the new bridge authority name, but I, I would say that if we do wanna change it, then let's change it sooner than later. So what is the group's thoughts on that? Is that, do we wanna- Can you speak up? I guess I would ask the group then, what would you like to do on that? Do you wanna make a change? Let's do it now, or are we okay with the name as is? Understanding that also buy what if you also buy white salmon bridge.org? I mean, I think a lot of the conversation at this point, the quick shorthand most people are familiar with is Hood River Bridge. Um, and I do worry if it causes confusion. I definitely agree that the acronym is kind of a tough one to create like an easy to find URL. I mean, I guess we could think about Hood River White Salmon Bridge, but I don't know. I mean, I appreciate um, Mayor Blackburn bringing it up, but it's funny being a Washington side <laughs> entity. It hasn't bothered me so much, but I think it's because we talk so often about the bridge as the Hood River Bridge that that's kind of been an acceptable shorthand. And I think people are more inclined to randomly find that URL than to be thinking about like typing in White Salmon Bridge. No one really calls it the White Salmon Bridge. It's never, if you pick one or the other, I think you most often hear Hood River Bridge. I rarely would hear. And I mean, one other piece to that is, is that the intent would be this site would be the Hood River White Salmon Authority site down the road. So with that in mind, do we want to name it something different now that we have a name for that authority? I think... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're kind of locked into the authority's name and it's going in the CFA and so on. Right. We can have a slightly different name if you wanted to for the website. Yeah. I, I mean, to me, the Hood River Bridge is an easy, the, the available options, like when we were just considering the name of the new entity, there's none that roll off the tongue that fast. And mm -hmm. for the website name, I think it doesn't need to be literally whatever that name is. And once you land on the site, if that branding is strongly showing HRWSBA, once you switch to that, or like right now, you land and immediately see the River White Salmon Bridge in the upper left. Yeah, I would, I would say it's really easy to purchase a domain for $15 for White Salmon Bridge and link it to the same website. Okay. Yeah. Should yeah, that's a great idea. So I'm just and grab the HRWSBA. Right. Should we grab that or grab mm -hmm. the River White Salmon Bridge Authority just to have it? And that way yeah. they can all point there yeah. and eventually yeah. we change to the I like that White idea. Bridge Authority. Yeah. Okay. So let's get the white, let's get White Salmon and get Hood River White Salmon Bridge Authority. And do we want HS? Let's explore no. some of the more generic things around the term Bridge Authority. If there's something very generic there, by state bridge, by state bridge, things work. like that, that may be easier to tell people um, that still um, refer it's to this easier. project. Oh, hrwsba.org looks like it's open. So. <laughs> Redirects are cheap. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we can see yeah. there's okay. a lot of traffic going if to one find, of those. Yeah, if we find one, it's okay. All right. So we'll, we'll pick up. I, I'm still I'm still stuck on the last point though. Mayor Kewitt uh, made a point about uh, the um, who is in charge of communications concerning tolling, and this really does get to the heart of the issue uh, in the public. And I'm wondering what what did what did you say is is is, is the current so circumstance? The, who is communicating what right now? The communication on the existing bridge. And the tolls to the existing bridge, the final word comes from the port commission. Right. So the final decisions do, but the communications the about communications it. Communications yeah. would then come out of the port, which has been historically Genevieve, but it'll be something that's been approved by the port commission. The anything related to the new bridge and tolling as a respect to the new bridge until the by state bridge authority is. <laughs> Till the White Salmon Hood River Bridge Authority is set up, Hood River send that back. <laughs> that get there, right? We're gonna get um, some sweatshirts. So yes. We just <laughs> um, then they will have all decision making related to the tolls on the new bridge. But until then, technically, they the Boston Working Group will make recommendations to the port 
but the port will have to communicate that out because the port is the only entity that really exists right now. So there's kind of an odd transition right now until we get the port. No, I'm talking about after we have the authority set up. So the yes. authority is running, the port is still running. Uh, there is a mess in the public's mind as to, okay, who's taking my money? What are they doing with it? What did they do with all the money they took for the last 10 years? And the port is going to be communicating that? I think they have to because they're the ones that have the authority to make the decisions related How, to tolls. Yeah, they're going to need some help. Wait, wait, well, I was going to say, I think that was maybe what your question is, yeah. which is sort of reading between the lines of this. This group still plays a key yeah. role yeah, in weighing right. in and, and reviewing what eventually will go for a final pass at the port and be owned by the port as the message that's released, but that we're not getting excluded from that process because I think we're all the front line and feel the most from residents yeah. about the historical, you know. All right, yeah. They, so what we talked can't... about, guys, is that there's kind of two streams that have to come together with this message on tolls. Okay, one stream is us, and, and we're looking for reserves, and we're looking for long-term uh, tolling that supports our needs under the new bridge as far as paying back tolls and operations and all that. There's a second piece of it, and, and part of that says we need to increase the tolls today to start building the reserve that we're going to need for credit worthiness and, and getting a TIFI loan and all that. There's another piece of this, which is coming from the port, and the port is, is responsible for saying, well, why are we having to do this? It's because all of the money that we're getting off the current bridge is going elsewhere, and the port's going to explain that. Really? So that's yeah. Did, that's their you job. Have you Genevieve? We had the discussion on Friday okay. with uh, with the right people, and I think there is a recognition that it's it's got to be their their message, mm -hmm. and it's coming. So between the two communication groups, the idea is that. We have to have a series of articles ready that are building blocks that are leading to, okay, here's what's happening with the toll increase. So it's it's a lot different than where it was six months ago. I, I, this piece really will be the heart of getting the public on board with this whole process. And I really afraid that it's going to be overwhelming for Genevieve without the support staff. We've got a big support no, staff. No, I, I, I think well yeah I would she's not about, gonna be doing it by herself. We will help her we'll generate help. the messages, work through the messaging. She's just going to be the one that releases it. So when we say Genevieve's name is she's not the sole person dealing with it. She's just the person that's going to be sending the stuff and communicating in and weighing in on what we actually need a meeting on like sisters. History. Yeah. We actually had a meeting with Ben and Genevieve and Kevin and myself on Friday to talk about this particular area. And what we've decided is that we're okay to go out. Genevieve in the past has used a communication organization to help her when she needs help. We're going to go reach that out to build that message. We're going to coordinate it with HNTB to make sure these two messages are going to blend together when we announce, uh, if we announce, we need a, a bridge toll increase. That raises an, another question that in my head, so I'm glad this we're stopping on this area because I read this chart, the roles and the different breakouts as kind of an order that we follow on everything. So I actually was inferring that the development, the content around the toll increase and how we message that is still coming from JLA, but that that ultimate that review process detours from those other steps and goes over to that Genevieve pass through as the final review, but that we still are all weighing in. But now what I'm hearing is that you're saying a toll increase message is actually getting split off and is a port owned and generated content creation that then maybe we're seeing and weighing in on, but it's not starting at the JLA. No, like they both took they both have to work in parallel together. Yeah. Okay. For JLA to explain to the world where the current bridge tolls are going yeah. is not fair to them. The, the port has to be responsible for 
telling the community, here's where all of these tolls have been going through all of these years. Now, the two stories have to work together. And that's where, as we talked on Wednesday, or on Friday, the development of this has got to come together and they've got to be communicating as you go. So there's not a big surprise at the end. Yeah, I guess I'm thinking of it more as absolutely JLA is not going to have all of that information that they need, but that that would be getting procured from the port over to JLA, whose time already with us and hearing kind of our concerns and all of us flagging this is this key area would be able to see the nuance and how to maybe start framing and crafting that message that then we're reviewing and as it goes through myself and others refining so that it leaves our team and the bi-state working group going back to the port by saying we're comfortable with you talking about this toll increase in this way and then it goes out which gives me more comfort than a, a system that's maybe two parallel tracks of the port solely under Genevieve crafting their toll increase message and we're not involved in how that's getting kind of worked it's, through. I honestly don't think that's the intent. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It might help if you pulled up slide eight because we talk, mm -hmm. we show a flow for this yeah. that I think is going to help. So, do you want to walk through this real quick? Yeah. So, this is like a workflow process that we developed for communications surrounding the existing bridge and tolling. So, you know, I'm not sure, Mike, where Genevieve wants to fit in her consultant that she works with here, but, you know, what we had intended is that. JLA, we would basically coordinate to do the planning, to do the research, information gathering, which, as you pointed out, we have been doing. Um, and then we're going to work with the task leads, carry, um, and the port on messaging and or materials. Um, and then right now, we have us sort of developing messaging and or materials, um, and then sending that to the review team. JLA revises, and then it goes to the port. Mike Fox, I'm going to pause right there. Is this has this changed since Friday? I'm I'm sorry, I was in a secondary. Oh, that's okay. I well, just I wanted to I'm know. Hearing, what yeah. I'm hearing is that um, we it should also be going to the bi state working group, not just for port review, um, because members of the bi state working group are also responsible for some of this messaging and is, is am I getting that right group that like that second green box where it says port comms review that we it should go to the port and by state working group okay so let me step back here a little bit this flow chart that you've got here I believe was for generic articles derived from the communication plan not necessarily the major one, which is, hey, we want to raise the tolls on the bridge. Here's the reason for, and why do we need to do this? This is any communication that comes off your communication plan, like here's the current status and so on. Is that not true? I, I think that is true, but I think that it seems um, unrealistic to try to separate the two. So. No, Go ahead. Okay, so let me look I at think Kevin. the slide earlier. Are, are you okay having Genevieve use HNTB as her arms and legs in developing positions and documentation and communication? I think that's from, part of the planning from the resource, source. the very first one. You know, the other part of that's going to be our new uh, finance director, Debbie, who's working with HNTB to get those OM and uh, costs attributed. Like, where are the tolls going? That I would put that all on the planning and research side. But the arms and legs, you're okay with HNTB doing oh, that absolutely. with and for the port. <laughs> absolutely. I, I think okay. we're Genevieve. Then I'll back off. We're Genevieve. Forget about sure, the dual role. She just wants to make sure that there isn't just from her understanding of the process, and she's really at ground zero aside from the elected officials, but working with our front desk staff. And ultimately, we'll be getting the phone calls and the people, the foot traffic in response to this, which is extremely painful yeah. for uh, them. Uh, and she just wants to be able to monitor that and understand that and, uh, you know, share her experience having gone through this and 
February 2018. So I, I see her being very active in that uh, planning research, the very first one, and then somewhere in that port approval stage, just you know, making sure there isn't anything that's slipped through the cracks. So is the port planning to continue with the um, uh, quarterly or seasonal newsletters that it's been doing? Yes, that, yes. So how do those tie into this world? Because they're clearly, most of that talks about the bridge or at least the yeah, majority of talks it. about it. And how is, where are those messages coming from? Yeah, that's a really good point. So we're right now we're working on our annual report. And so on those poor uh, bridge replacement specific issues, we'll just need to, we'll just need to have another uh, coordination with uh, JLA. And does that look like this or? Well, I think that uh, if you're looking at the planning research, I mean, one way to look at it, the article that would end up in that newsletter would basically be in that planning re research phase. And then as we're drafting it, we can work JLA into a review just to make sure that there isn't anything that's running counter to the effort. And then it just continues on. It might be just a singular article or plural and then it will eventually work its way back into the newsletter. And there's a, just so everybody knows, can you go up a slide? Yes, I sure can. And I just want to point out that Mayor Kiewitz had her hand up yeah, for a while. Um, I don't know, <laughs> Mayor, does it does your comment relate to what we're talking about right now? Yeah, yeah, mostly it was just what I'm what I'm seeing in this, you know, workflow is it's very directional, right? So there's just it's like it starts here and it continues on. And I, I feel like a lot of this kind of content and discussion has a little bit more circular nature to it, right? Where we need to like someone comes up with an idea and a proposal and it goes to the next group and they work on it, but then it needs to go back to be like, is this what you guys meant? And is you know like so that that um, we don't get all the way to the publishing point and it's lost its its way um, on that path. Mm -hmm. um, and and like like Genevieve was or like um, Kevin was talking about Genevieve having this experience. I think that you know because we are representing our communities, we kind of hear these things and we know what people are saying, and so we can maybe anticipate more how they're going to respond to some of these different ideas or solutions um, that get proposed. Um, and so, I don't know, I think it could be useful to loop us in throughout the process um, instead of just having it start and then end and not really be involved in the middle. Yeah, and I guess the intent was not this wasn't linear at any point through there when like the Bi State Working Group reviews it, it may go back to the planning stage and go back through the loop again. It was just more of this was the order of discussion, not to capture all the paths that they can follow. Yeah, I as somebody who like manages the production of pieces, I feel like I'm constantly working in circles, like nothing is linear ever. So if it were my workflow, it'd be like arrows going back constantly and reflowing. But for the purposes of this, we just try to simplify as much as possible just to like really highlight like the key points that that we have to hit those review stages um, and that development. But yeah, you're right. It is an iterative process um, okay. all the time. Okay. Good. Yeah. To be a little bit less polite than Mayor Kewitt was, uh, I think that we have two major roles. One is uh, to stop digging the hole that we're in deeper, and the second is to start filling it in. And so I'm measuring all of this against that. <clears throat> and uh, my concern is that uh, newsletters could dig the hole deeper, but it sounds like they're going to go through a discussion review process, which hopefully will will flag any of those possibilities before they happen. And then in terms of, 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 of filling in the hole, a lot of that's gonna depend on what is done as opposed to how it's described. So I'm almost less concerned about the communication aspects of it than I am about making the right decisions. Okay, let's keep going. Okay. so. I know we sort of briefly touched on these two workflows between existing bridge and tolling and bridge replacement comms. Do you need me to go over these closely or do you feel like this is sufficient in our conversation? Keep going. Okay. 
I do want to point out that after this conversation, when it comes to existing bridge and tolling, I did add that JLA wants to develop this messaging with the port. So really with Genevieve, so that we're really making sure that we get that right. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna jump ahead to an overview uh, from January to March about what the top line messages are. Um, so I just to start off with January, um, we have sent out a funding update uh, press release that got jumped ahead at the queue a little bit um, based on timing needs. So. Genevieve sent that out on Friday, um, and I believe it was picked up by um, a few newspapers, and it might get picked up, I think, tomorrow and Wednesday um, by some additional prints. Um, so then we're just going to talk about bridge replacement progress. This is really like accomplishment so far, bridge benefits. Um, we're going to launch the new website and social media, as we discussed. Um, and then in February, we're going to start to introduce some tolling basics. So why do we need tolls? What are they for? Um, we're going to talk about tolling in terms of the current bridge and the new bridge. Um, and then we hope to have a Facebook Live event sometime in February. Right now it's scheduled for early February, but I don't think that's realistic. So probably end of February. Um, and then that will lead into March, which will be March, April, right now we're assuming March, but that might get pushed into April, um, is really focusing on some public open houses. So doing some in-person um, and online outreach. We're going to talk about the new bridge benefits. So basically, what do we know about the new bridge? Um, we might be, it might be time to release the proposed tolling package. We don't know, that's TBD. Um, and then there might be some input opportunities um, related to a park in Washington on the Washington side, and then multimodal um, opportunities on the bridge. And then throughout the entire process on the website, um, in our emails, we're going to be adding this sort of consistent public call to action um, for people to call their legislators um, to tell them why the bridge is important and to prioritize funding. So that's high level overview. And then we have month to month, um, which we're just gonna to touch on it. We expanded a bit in the packet. So you can refer to that if you wanna learn a little bit more about what these um, messages are. So for bridge replacement progress, we're really like the big kind of hitch is that this is forward momentum. So we are working on it, we're active. Um, the project has had more progress in the last 18 months than it ever has before. Um, so again, really, emphasizing those new bridge benefits. Um, we're gonna say the preliminary engineering work is happening with surveying and geotech, um, and that we have been doing some legislative outreach. And then um, if we have them, um, FEIS and ROD updates. We might not have those. So if we don't, we'll just take it off the list. Um, website and social media, the, the message here is that we have reliable and regular primary source of information um, everything that is new will be on that website. Um, we'll have that call to action, not only for the legislators, but also when we launch uh, the press release, we'll talk about sign up for email um, and follow us on social media. So those will be kind of the big plugs. Um, and then we've published our funding update. Um, that was about future grant opportunities and that the new bridge authority will help future applications. And then secondary, we'll just get into this public uh, call to action. We call that a CTA. Um, so this campaign will continue through Q1, if not longer, potentially the whole year, or potentially until we have funding. Um, so we're asking for state and federal representatives. Um, we want people to tell their representatives, uh, how do you and your community rely on the bridge? Um, and then we are, providing some links that people can figure out who their representatives are, um, but that we're always available to answer that and to help out if people have questions. And then down here, I'm gonna pause hold for on, questions hold, just a hold second. A minute. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, so um, again, I, I search for ways to say this uh, um, nicely. Uh, the um, For a long time, we've been communicating this concept of momentum. And if you look through years of port newsletters, you'll see everything's going great. We're moving forward. A bridge mm -hmm. is going to appear at the end of uh, at the end of this pipeline. 
uh, uh, if I were communicating, and I, all the time people ask me, well, how's it going? And I say, it's going great, except that we don't have any money. Mm -hmm. uh, any is a little bit of an overstatement, but we don't have the money. Uh, and that the big problem, we're, we're, we have everything lined up. Uh, we're doing all the right things, but getting the money is the big problem right now. Are we sharing that with the world? Are we communicating that? Uh, you know, you, you're, you're giving a message, a call to action to ask them to talk to their state and federal uh, representatives. But, um, you know, if you're saying that, then someplace the message has to come across that we need money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I think, you know, it's, it, everyone's so eager to say everything's marching forward. Great. Uh, it's not. Yeah, and that was part of the message that went out with this funding update that was in the on the last slide. And it we hear you loud and clear, like that is something that if you go through that this comms plan um, that was just sent out, like you can see it consistently month after month that that's a major message that uh, we're planning to deliver. Um, in addition to asking the public to get out there and call their local representatives or contact them to be, you know, ask for money to support the bridge replacement because it's we're going to need to fund the replacement with a variety of funding sources. I, th I think this really goes to the credibility of this communication as we move forward, that being honest with the public, that uh, that there are a lot of really good things being done now, uh, mm -hmm. but that big hole in this whole plan is the lack of money and we're working really hard on it and you can help. But uh, to, to deny that fact, mm -hmm. I think it's just perpetuating the uh, the messaging, which every time you know, I got one of those things in my mailbox, I would just tear it up and throw it away because I was so angry seeing this false message and then talking to the public and having people tell me, yeah, so new bridge, we're gonna have a new bridge in, in two years, right? It's like, yeah, it's people have been lied to and they need to get straight information now. I think that is one good thing about getting that release out last week, even though, you know, again, we talked about to, turnaround time wasn't as fast as we had hoped, but confronting it more head on of like, we just spent all of last summer and fall talking positively and having a lot of hope that the, we were going to be successful and taking ownership and getting it out from us to say, nope, we didn't get any of those awards. Here's what we think those problems are. And I think looking out to 23, yes, right now we can be more in that optimistic forward momentum space of, we do seem to have a clear bullet list of what we need to achieve this year, but when and would it be appropriate at some point this spring to shift and to put more pressure on the key things that we do, I have concerns about, if we are successful getting, seeing some state dollars coming from Oregon this year, that's a big deal. And it would change kind of how we go into 24 and 25. And when do we maybe start speaking more candidly into the community or having that be part of the public message so that it does feel genuine and we don't start to look robotic of, oh yeah, it's all great. And I think again, we're on the right path to shifting what's been that historical sense of like, oh yeah, you're going to get a new bridge, you're going to get a new bridge, just by the fact that we took ownership and put out a release saying we didn't get anything. It's not a total shock, but the sooner or later, these these programs need to hit for us or we are going to have a problem. So, so do we need an article in January that sets up this call to action, maybe a little bit more than what we've got, and that is Hey, we didn't get funding. Our, our plan still is 125 from each state. Here's where we are on, on Washington. We got to get it released. And on Oregon, we need the whole, whole commitment. And here's what we're doing in Oregon this year, which is vastly increasing what we've done in the past. Uh, but we need your help. And here's some telephone numbers. And the ask is a 125 million. We need your help. Give a call. Go ahead. So I try to change this from my thinking. When when we're going for a million to $5 million asks, yeah, calling in and talking to your legislator has your local legislator for find me the money for this, and that's going to be one of your top projects. I think that has value. When we're trying to shoot for $125 million, I think you're in a different ball game and calling your local legislator. If your local legislator isn't behind it, nothing's going to happen anyways. Our local legislators are clearly behind it. 
it has to be far more specific, determined for the people that are in the right positions on the right committees that are going to be making the decisions over a larger package. And that's not something you usually ask the public to do. That's something that happens amongst the people that are going to spend all, you know, the time down in Salem or Olympia, you know, going to those right places. I mean, how many meetings have we hosted? That's where those happen. And so I think pulling the public in to try to say, you know, that call your local legislator, I find that a little disingenuous because that's not going to, that's not going to get us there. If I want to use, you know, that public perception and pushing for something, I want to have something that has a chance of success or has actual purpose that gives you where you want to go. And so like, yeah, we need money. And I think that, that since we got the results, Marla has been on the radio, uh, our port commission or port chair has been on the radio and we've been saying, yeah, we didn't get the money, but that wasn't unexpected. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's when you look at the list of the mega projects, you know, and lots of those are ready to go. We're focusing on getting the answers to those questions to moving on so that in 2024, when the federal dollars that always have to be the last to the party, we get everything through the state. And so that's what I think we need to focus that we should be saying here, we need the money, but saying like, call your local legislator. I just don't see that being valuable. And I, it's, honestly, I think your local legislator is going to get tired of hearing it. I think that's the point, though. Um, I mean, I think, I think if we can get people to be motivated and call and make those, you know, put that time in, then I think that that just either annoys them. But either way, you're you're just you're you're re minding them that this is something that's important and i think having it be repeated over and over again um even though that they even though the individuals probably can't make the ask that's needed just i think reminding them over and over again that this is important um will have a positive overall positive effect if I could just, yeah if i could just piggyback on <clears throat> what both uh, Catherine and Jake are saying, and that's, I think, working with our professional associations, like the Association of Oregon Counties, League of Oregon Cities, Special Districts, because they all have legislative committees, and trying to find uh, those other transportation needs in our individual states to show that there is a need for a transportation package that won't just help I-5, but will help all the other rural and other communities in each state is another way to tackle the, the problem at a, you know, at a statewide level. So I know you, I think, Arthur, aren't you on the AOC? I'm on the Legislative Committee, yeah. I'm just, I was just trying to think of, um, it, that's really not the sort of thing the Legislative Committee is dealing with right now. Um, uh, that really is something that's dealt with by working with leadership in both houses. That, that's where this decision is going Are to you make. seeing anything in transportation? Do you have like a transportation subcommittee within your legislative? Uh, I'm, I'm, it must be in one of the committees. I, I'm not even sure which committee owns transportation, but it's not something that tends to come up in these discussions because really AOC has so little influence on that. It's, you know, it, it's more issues on natural resources and, and uh, um, unhoused and that sort of thing that with the specific policy initiatives coming along, the, the 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 horse trading to get money doesn't really go through AOC very effectively. Well, we we weren't going to bring this up until later, but Mike and I have got a little action coming out of a, an Oregon uh, lobbyist comment, which once he made, I went, duh, we're going to go after with your approval. Um, to get an endorsement of the uh, national trade unions, all the construction unions. And uh, we've got a mechanism now that I think we can do that in fairly short order within a month. But that would basically require us to declare this project's going to be union, which in my mind, something this big in this area of the world probably a 90% chance of in union anyway. Mm -hmm. And if we had the backing of all the unions, I think that would help persuade some of our, especially Oregon, to uh, 
to help push because they're they're a big electorate. One question I have is in Oregon, have you guys pushed for this to be considered a project of statewide significance? Have we regional? Yeah. It's we have it on our regional uh mm -hmm. statewide. It, it's the priority process. I'm not sure how you guys do it, but we have a prioritization process that, that runs through ODOT. And we as a county put this at the top of the list for the county. Uh, and then that gets passed along to the regional act, which is area area committee on transportation. And from there it goes to the, to the state, which is the Oregon Transportation Commission. So in Washington, and we did this with uh, the pump storage project, we got it considered a project of statewide significance. Uh, you know, the governor signed off saying, this is a project that we want to see funded, that we want to see streamlined, that this is where we're going to put our funds. It's kind of like the same thing, IBR, you know, project of statewide but that's going significance. Going on we also got endorsed thing. by the trades. Yes. Yeah, and I, I think getting a, a trade endorsement, you know, anything that's a big construction project, they'll, they'll endorse. The problem is that they'll, that anything that's a big construction project they'll endorse. So it's not, it doesn't help the legislation saying this one's more important than that one. Uh, but uh, I, I would want to know if there's some process by which we can uh, get the governor to sort of push the OTC towards that. I don't, I don't know how one would do that. Uh, Paul, uh, Mayor Blackburn is there. Maybe he's got some thoughts. Oh. <laughs> You're on mute. He just shook his head. No. And the reason I bring it is, is because at some point there will be another transportation package in Oregon. And if okay. you can get uh, as known as a project of statewide significance, you can be sure that you're going to be on that list. Right now, we don't know if we're going to be on that list. Yeah. So. It does make me think, too, though, that this was a question raised in our meeting um, with DOT. Just that this is on, the in, at that time, the incoming governor's radar in Oregon. And, you know, hearing this conversation here today, it just connects it back. Maybe it would be beneficial for us, not that we aren't already considering all angles, but making more of a concerted effort at that executive level to get this project seen on a, a list that's coming out of that office or that it's getting flagged. So maybe there's that type of reverse pressure into some of these representatives that we're going to need them to get on board. And part of that was what was when we were told about the labor unions, that was one of the reasons why was that that would help to get it on to the governor's radar. Sure. I'm just thinking uh, Mayor Blackburn is probably the most knowledgeable about or has the most is most likely to have contacts into the transition group. I've spoken to the transition people on homelessness. I have not spoken to the transition people in this region, in this area. And I don't even know who it is or how to get to them. Well, I, I, I am in the same place, Arthur. I mean, I appreciate the, the idea that I'm all dialed in with the governor, but not, not, <laughs> not so much. Okay. Um, uh, do any of the folks we know, um, like uh, certain realtors in town, for example? I would guess that Maui knows. Maybe we should, uh, you and I should talk to him. Yeah, I'd welcome that. I, that's a good idea. Yeah, good idea. Okay, so do we have consensus regarding trying to get local population to call their, should we just let that lie a little bit and we keep pushing at the, more of the executive level? Arthur? There's, there's some stuff that's going on that we're setting up uh, monthly meetings now in both uh, Oregon State as well as Washington and then uh, at the federal level to, to keep all of this out in front of people. And the, and the intent is for Oregon, Zoom calls two out of three, and then the third one would be in their face. Uh, at the federal level, we'd have Zoom calls once a month uh, and then go back twice a year just to keep, keep our, us out in front of them. I have a suggestion for maybe a way to resolve both issues, what um, Commissioner Anderson was saying and, and what I was saying. Um, maybe we um, just have a form on the website where, you know, you could say if this is an important issue to you and you want to add your name to the list, you know, you put your name and your email in and where you live and we keep the list and then we share it with our legislators when we talk to them. And then we also get their 
um, contact information for future um, outreach about the bridge updates. Couldn't hurt. Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I, I really think both of you are right at, at different levels that um, uh, Commissioner Anderson is correct that, um, you know, if anything, you just uh, piss people off when you ask them for something that they clearly don't have the ability to give you. But uh, keeping a buzz going is an important thing. And uh, how do you keep the buzz without uh, without pissing people off? And I guess that's why the PR people get the big bucks. Um, Catherine, I think it would be pretty easy for us to add um, just a checkbox, you know, when we're asking for them to sign up for emails, first, last name, are you interested? Um, so that's something that we could add pretty easily in a form on the website. I would say too, because I, I agree with um, the root of Jake's point, which it kind of is back to the whole, are we being authentic? And are we being received authentically when we're sharing these messages? And if they're always just the optimistic, we're moving forward, moving forward. And every month it's always for years now, call your legislator, call your legislator. But uh, so making sure that if we do have a call to action, that it like truly is something that we need the public to weigh in on. And one thing that comes to mind, because I like Catherine's idea of like, well, then let's be the bearer of a letter that's signed by X amount of you know local residents. But another thing that we do need as we move this forward is more diversity in the stories that we're telling of who this bridge represents. And so if we're drawing people to this new website, not just giving them a call to action to sign a letter, but to sort of prod, like share your story and allow submissions to occur of how is the bridge, you know, part of your day to day or experience you've had directly tied to the bridge, either helping or hurting a medical emergency or something else. And that allows us to curate through this time period, getting some of those stories submitted. So when we're thinking about future video vignettes on emergency response, if we've got some to pull from, we can be more intentional and make sure that the faces that we're putting out there reflect the true diversity of our communities and aren't just who we think of top of hat of like, oh, let's go to you know the sheriff or whomever. But if we get good resident generated stories and that gives them something to do as we're working on this project too, to like be able to contribute or, or add into you know that story pile of things we should think about. I like that because that can also have an authenticity, which yeah. mm -hmm. this other stuff lacks. Yeah. So we do have a state action that we may be beneficial from having the public, and that is the aging of the $75 million. Is that something that we want to put out to have people? So the, the what? The aging the aging of the 75 million dollars there's a lot of discussion that's going on probably in the right places so i don't know if it does any good to have anybody reach out um i, I would but, let i would let senator yeah. king try to you push that, that okay. and not involve i mean that's highly complex highly technical that's when you're asking the public to do something it's got to be really simple okay. now if you're asking the public to send you know co-mingle a bunch of letters and their experiences to send it to the governor as a call to action of this is a bridge of statewide significance and that's that's the purpose of it so that you can get the executive branch pushing down because honestly i fear that on oregon half of our fight is going to be with the dot the, yeah. because this is not their bridge they've got their own problems why do they want to take on an extra problem and that's going to take pressure from the top down, pushing them for them to say, no, we're going to spend money here. We're going to invest state dollars here. And that's going to have to come from both sides. And I, I think maybe that's where I see something that's lacking. And if that's where we want to have, you know, the public push on, well, your, your new governor, enjoy. Yeah. Where our locals, they're well aware. I would hope our local legislators are well aware. And on board. Okay, let's keep going. Great. So February is where we start to talk about tolling. Um, right now, we're keeping a very high level. We're talking about what we know now. Um, tolling basics about the current bridge. I've heard some conversation that maybe we might need to pull some other stuff in there. But for right now, uh, we're talking about why do we need tolls, how are toll prices decided, and who has jurisdiction over tolls. 
Um, and then, you know, basically cost to build a new bridge and how tolling works into that when it comes to the new bridge. Um, and then we're talking about doing a Facebook Live discussion sometime in February. Um, we'll see if we if we feel ready for that. Um, but you know, the the communications out would be how to participate, um, what will be covered. Um, and you know, we're hoping to cover in that Facebook Live event project updates. Um, a chance to submit questions, but I do think the conversation is going to be come about tolling. Um, so we want to make sure that everybody feels prepared um, to have that conversation. So it's possible that might need to shift a little bit or maybe move to later February. And the whole point of this February communications is to prep the public for potentially this tolling study that might come out in March. If that moves, then this might be a longer um, rollout or a more in-depth rollout. So we're gonna be a bit responsive when it comes to tolling and obviously working with Genevieve and the port and adjusting kind of how we support them. I, I would offer up, you yeah. also need to have some status in February. What else is going on? Yeah, so the, those are in our secondary okay. uh, messages. Yeah, so we've got this call to action, which maybe that's gonna be TBD now. Um, the other things that we want to talk about are progressive design builds and how this project is um, choosing to use that method and what is it and the benefits. Um, we're going to talk about the port. Um, so really like what is the port's charge? Uh, ro what role will they play with the new bridge? Um, if we've got an update on the primary place of business, we can talk about that. Um, and then, you know, Obviously, it's end of January, so some of our January messaging might end up rolling a bit into February. So these are, you know, obviously an iterative process, but these are sort of some of the secondary messages that we want to roll out in February. So, so just a question here, Mike. When will we, the geotech actually in the river? Not until May June. May, May or June. May or June. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, and. Uh, Oh, okay. yeah. On land over here, it's February next day on the sixth. I think so. I think there's an article there that shows what they're doing, a couple pictures, why it's important, how it feeds into yep. bridge design. Yeah, we're Definitely, gonna... and I think we were going to bring that up in this bridge replacement progress in January. Yes. So actually, pretty much now, talking yeah. about the sort of preliminary engineering work, the surveying that's happening now. That story that you. Um, just mentioned commissioner is in progress right now. Mm -hmm. okay. um, legislative activities in February are gorgeous nights on February 8th and February 15th. We are developing um, swag for attendees um, and we'll update some one pagers and some fact sheets as well. And then we are gonna continue sort of the activities, these other communication um, monthly updates, direct stakeholder outreach, those will continue and our hope is that we'll create those, you know, at least bi-monthly or monthly updates. We feel okay to move on to March? Is our swag going to look like a, a bridge for a pen? <laughs> so we can just make... Mike. Do you want to spend a couple minutes talking about the swag we're thinking about getting? Yeah, no. I'm curious. <laughs> okay. But only a couple of minutes. Well, All right. up, uh, before, that, before that for a minute, because the, 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 the total discussion for January, um, I can't tell you how many people have said to me, say, hey, I participated in that um, in that study and the tolls are going to be $7, the tolls are going to be $8, the tolls are going to be $10. Um, I presume that you have some explanation. I, I explained to people that's actually kind of a trick to how these studies are done, that they throw out random numbers and see how random groups of people Wait. respond to random numbers. But um, not really quite that way. <laughs> well, no, actually, more, it's mathematical. It's more math to it and, and I mean, what the intent is, is the upper and lower limits to that, right? And what they are trying to get at is what is the what is the limit for the area that we're in? And they're wanting to get feedback on what the elasticity is of the area. Right. Um, so they know that, you know, some seven, $7 toll is never going to happen, right? $5 toll is never going to happen. You know, that's kind of what they're trying to get at because you it's need the, to know what that elasticity is. The elasticity is the point, but the methodology... Uh, 
has built into it the fact that if you ask someone, are you willing to pay you know, $3.17 per toll, uh, you're not going to get a meaningful answer from that. But when you throw, but when you look at the difference in the response of different groups of people to numbers, that that helps you understand the elasticity of it. And you can then put that against the national model uh, and figure out where you are. So I, I, I think I understand how it's done, but I also think that it's pretty natural that people, uh, a large percent of the population participated in this and they saw these numbers and they responded and Jake shaking and said, yes, so I'm assuming that you got the same phone calls that I got. Um, not yeah. very nice words. Yeah. <laughs> so no, nice talking words. about I don't get those talking words. about digging that hole deeper. That definitely dug that hole quite a bit. We deeper. didn't have a choice there, right? That was right. Washington, it was Washington State. State. But again, yeah. we didn't come out with our own marketing to say, like, thank you for participating in this. That was done through Washington State. And the purpose was to set the upper and lower limits. We have no intention of setting the toll at seven dollars. But that's what, unless that's we get no federal can, state dollars. That's what they can talk about in January, though. Right. Yeah, and actually, we have in March. So, from what we understand, the Washington Transportation Committee, the or the the commission, the um, report on that kind of analysis is not going to be ready until March, April. So, we tentatively have that report out in March. Um, it's possible that, you know, if people feel like we need to have answers for that study and before we go out and really talk about tolling, that is something that we can work into this um, and get a little bit more clarity from the Washington Transportation Committee. So we kind of have anticipated that we'll talk about that in March, um, but I agree that that was a bit of a wild card uh, for us. So we're hoping that we can rein that in and Kind of incorporate that into the larger tolling conversation. And I think we already missed the boat on having that discussion. Enough time has passed. You don't want to bring it up again. It's already bad feelings. Wait till the next part comes out. You want to talk about swag? Yeah. <laughs> All right. What are we? I think we should get the thing to like break a a window of a car <laughs> as like a and like With the other the... side's a beer opener or something. So like a little nod to. <laughs> All right, we're going to keep talking about this one. Press ball. <laughs> no, uh, we, we sent Dallas an idea of like little Lego yeah. kits. You did, I know, it's great. So bring up the Excel sheet. And so our goal on this, because of the region, was we were trying to do things that would be usable, that would be not something that's going to end up in the landfill or thrown out as soon as they walk out of the room, um, but also something that they would use on a regular basis that would be a reminder of the project, right? So that was kind of our thought at the time, trying to pick some of these items. So you won't see squishy balls and you won't see some of the things, because honestly, you use them for two days and you throw it away or you, it ends up in the landfill, right? So we we're trying to find things that didn't do that. So we were looking at the recyclable bags because everybody has those. They keep them around and use them and over and over and drag them all over the place. And, we thought that would be one one item. Um, we're looking at pins, but we we got to do some more looking to find ones that are more economical but seemed expensive to me to add a buck a piece to. Oh yeah, pin. so that seemed really. This is, this would be given out at the Gorge Nights. Well, yeah. Gorge Nights or you know Huck Fest or Harvest Fest or whatever events we're doing. But yes, it it would be to do that. Um, the Post it notes. Branded post-it notes. Yeah, one of them was branded post-it notes, as everybody seems to pick those up and use them. And, and again, it gets that reuse. Um, and then Jess really loves these. Uh, she has one from years ago. They're little, like, just drinking cups that they're reusable, and they would have a, a bridge logo on them and something that we would actually reuse. We talked about water bottles, but what we decided was everybody has their own water bottle that they kind of like a certain style. And if you don't have that style, then they don't use it and it just gets thrown away or not used again. This is a little more universal. Um, so this was one of the other items that we were looking at to get. So what was the other ones? Um, we're also just going to get some reusable supper tables. So reusable tablecloths with the logo, um, a vinyl banner to hang, and then we'll get um square branded uh, stickers as well. 
that we'll probably be more likely to use with the public than at gorgeous nights, but we can bring them to those events as well. Those thoughts? You asked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, does it sound okay? Is there any um, No, I definitely agree ways. with the idea of like not trying to just do something that's going to get thrown away. Um, or is there ideas that, you know, somebody's actually got a useful giveaway that they're like, you know, this was actually useful and I remember where I got it. And right. that was like just, I don't remember when Alice got it, but she got it a number of years ago that like to where the, the label has actually worn off, but she still remembers where she got that cup. From. Like, yeah, it's like I don't know for five hundred million, and after all this, I think shot glasses and. <laughs> <laughs> well, those uh, aluminum cups are also good for beer or wine. Yeah, and you can bail or out tequila, your whatever. <laughs> so, I, I, that's gonna. That's the ones we we're looking at doing. So. Any concerns with moving forward with those options for gorgeous nights? What are have we have we talked to the other attendees at Gorgeous Nights, the other ports? Oh, yeah, they're doing they're because it would be nice if we were, you know, if we'll there's like five bags already, we probably don't want to do it. Yeah, do um, I didn't talk to them about sponsorship stuff, but I haven't talked to them. I don't know if everybody's picked out their what they're handing out or Kevin, if you know, I don't think we have. I want to say that there's a planning meeting, maybe even today, or maybe it's tomorrow. There's a planning mm -hmm. session for yeah. Gorgeous Nights, so I can certainly ask. Maybe people? like a um, coast coaster. <laughs> I don't yeah, know why I just lost my voice. Cool. I don't know. Or I was just looking at oddly branding things today, but like um, reusable like bento box for uh, like a lunch or you know on the go meal that had our logo. Maybe okay. I've seen collapsible cups. Like if we are yeah. thinking about cups, which I think some I've definitely kept. I kept the one I got and I've bought some just. Uh, going forward because they are much more convenient than always having like a clunky cup but mm -hmm. that might be interesting like something collapsible that could um carabiners was one that we talked about oh yeah carabiners like, that would be good too. we try to think of things that people in this area would use like yeah outdoors you know type things too that's what we're thinking carabiners maybe one but... i mean i like where you could do a bridge to beer <laughs> we have breweries on both sides one thing we talked you were going to brand the uh your nose the Fruit Loops flyer. That, yeah. Are you allowed to bring in that? Can we brand it? Like, could we put the logo on the cover of it? Oh, oh you can or buy advertising. Of it or they, advertising. They sell advertising, absolutely. Okay. I don't know if things like that, maybe we can talk about that later. But that's how you, you talk. Opportunities for that's the chamber that produces that. Okay. Would it make sense rather than just doing ours to do somebody else that's going to be there and putting like two things on the cup? Oh, or something yeah. like that. Oh, that's Either a good idea. It should really show the coalition. There. Yeah, for the gorgeous nights, especially. That's yes. A bad thing to do. Yeah. We could talk to Jen and some others about sure. that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Cascade Walks. Yeah. What's the drop dead date for, for giving the order? Probably soon because February 8th is coming up. Yeah. How long does it take to get that stuff? Sometimes several weeks. So we were hoping to place orders as soon as today, um, but we can hold off. Um, I can, I got to get back in touch with my coordinator on the drop dead dates for these. I would imagine. We'll check on it tomorrow and see if there's time. any way to stop it. And yeah, we'll yeah. make the decision tomorrow. Great. Okay. Go forward and do good work. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Bye. I got a couple of questions if that's okay. That's Yes, who are you? Um, I, I live in the river, so I go across the bridge all the time. I'm also a contractor, so I know a little bit about budgets and contracting and building. I have some ideas to propose and also some some questions. Uh, one would be, uh, my name is Mark, by the way. Mark, Hi, Mark. Hi. Hi. Um, so uh, could, you, could you move over you're saying yeah. right in the bright in the so yeah. I, I can yeah, barely yeah, see sure. you <laughs> one, of the, one of the things i was was about was is the bridge going to have uh, pedestrian passage are you guys planning on that yeah yeah sidewalk is there going to be a uh, designated bike lane there's going to yes. be a 12 foot lane on the west side of the bridge and in that 12 foot lane we'll have pedestrian and bicycles super um that was one of my main questions and the 
other question was, are you going to embrace any kind of indigenous uh, themes into the bridge? We'll be meeting with them. So they're going to be part of our aesthetics committee. Okay. To when we start looking at that, yes. And then um, I have this kind of offshoot idea about uh, hydro flow generation from the river current. Yes. Fish, fish safe. So you can generate power with that, yes. like a kind of a, a flow turbine. Is that something that we have not talked about that? I've, I've heard it come up before outside of this discussion and uh, uh, talked to a company. Uh, that has some local ties that uh, was uh, testing something like kind of cascade locks, uh, but I, I I don't know where where those discussions have gone. But we've certainly got time to to consider that. We're we're just starting preliminary design right now, so you know those kinds of things. Some of us have actually talked about it. Um, I'm thinking you're probably talking. Early 24 to have those discussions. Is there going to be design committees outside of the contractors you choose to design, or are you incorporating the public into the design in any way? We're, we're taking into consideration the conceptual design that we've already got with public hearings and so on. Uh, but I'm sure we're going to open it up for other considerations as well. The challenge that we have here, being brutally honest with you, once we start in and we've awarded a contract with a major design outfit, we're talking big money now. So we're going to have to make decisions fairly quickly. But if he's talking about aesthetics, the Gorge Commission is going oh, yeah. to be involved yeah. in this and they will be holding public hearings and all, yeah. all sorts of stuff. There'll be plenty of public hearings. And, and there's and quite a bit we can do with the type of bridge that we're building that will make it look pretty nice. And the Gorge Commission has some in their planning master document about what the bridge is supposed to be, and we're already reaching out to them to start those conversations on right. their visual subordination, there's reflecting of the cultural heritage, et cetera, and there's a bunch of different columns that things have to fit into. And uh, and but I, I think they'll be running that discussion. Is the height going to be raised for the channel for our boats? Yeah. Yeah. So there won't be a lift span. It'll it'll raise up and then drop. Down. It's basically if you look at where the lift span goes to now, that's where yeah. the deck is going to go across. So the bridge will be steeper, uh, but um, no lift. Uh, okay. Is it going to be a similar grate design? Because that, oh, that's no. what really built. That's not allowed. Ice. That's not allowed in anything because it, it lets. Uh, if you look at your garage at, yeah. at the end of the winter, you see all the crap that's on the floor there. Uh, that's all the stuff that's coming off of cars. You're not allowed to let that stuff into the rivers anymore. You have to collect that and treat all of that stuff. So we'll have a, a drainage collection system on the bridge, and it's going to be concrete. Is it going to be a radiant thermal, it's like ice storm, so it'll, it'll stay, uh, stay, stay free of ice? We haven't decided yet. Seems like a pretty easy technology to incorporate. I, I, I'll tell you, I, I saw an example of that in one place where they had this great stuff on their stairs to uh, to melt all the ice and at the bottom of the stairs. Everything would then refreeze and there'd be just a, a slide down there. So it doesn't always work. <laughs> yeah, on a, on a bridge, you have the river to, to drain. Yeah. To drain right. all yeah. Uh, okay. Well, uh, I'll, I'll stay soon. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. Okay. Hey, you thanks a lot. Hey, thanks for coming. Okay. We want to move on to the primary place of business. We're yeah. Through let's time. let's keep going. We have decisions we need to make. Um, so the next, just real quick on Gorgeous Night Show, I just want to make sure I've got everybody's attendance on that. So right now it's on the 15th down in Salem. Um, we are planning a hearing date for the bill that was, that was put up. Um, that, that has not been scheduled, but it's looking like that's going to be in April. So we'll get that information out and let us know if you want to attend that. We also need to reach out to uh, some of the local uh, entities that were there at the October event on the panel oh. and see if they would be willing to go down with us. So I'll work with you, Marla, to see about getting contacts and okay. and who may want to go down there with us and, and prep them for that. Um, and then also, uh, so in Olympia on the 7th and the 8th, uh, I have the attendees as Jake, Marla, Catherine, Mike Fox, and Kevin. Is there anyone else planning to go? I am not able to go. 
Okay. This is Catherine, sorry. Is Genevieve going to be getting hotel rooms since we're going up for gorgeous nights and the next day? I'll work there. with her. That's why I wanted to make sure we had the right people in and we'll, I'll work with her to figure out logistics for everybody and getting up there and staying and all that. And Mike, just so you know, I, there's, you close post <clears throat> there's postcards. And so Genevieve has brought postcards okay. for uh, Salem and Olympia. Okay. Take as many as you need and pass them out to people that may be interested in coming along. Um, you should have invites on the 8th for, I think, five meetings. Uh, Senator Kane, Leah, Marcus, uh, Mossbrucker, and uh, Pye. Those are in the, uh, I think I'll saw all your names on the invites for that. Yes. Um, and then on the federal piece, just real quick, uh, we're setting up monthly virtual meetings um, through HAL, and we'll also be doing two trips a year. The first trip, we're looking at somewhere towards the end of April. Uh, for the next trip out, um, and there'll be more details on that. And then just an FYI, we found out today that Hal's firm has added uh, Peter DeFazio oh, nice. to their staff. So he's uh, part of their group now. So we'll, we'll see how, I think he's only allowed to suggest stuff now, but um, he's part of the organization. So, um, all right, let's get down to the bridge authority. Um, Primary place of business. Uh, we need we postponed that action from the last meeting. Uh, there was some additional information sent out on the finances. Uh, was there any other questions related to that or discussion that we need to do, or are we okay with uh, moving forward with discussion on Oregon being the primary place of business? With that, could we have a, a consensus? Kind of vote here to, to have Oregon be the uh, the state of business. I guess uh, we have a thumbs up if you agree. One, two, three, Marla. Uh, well, one question I had. Obviously, I know I've talked a lot about this, so I don't want to just hear myself. But after the last conversation, and knowing obviously some of the information that was sent back that. There's still potentially, if there's the location in Washington, some benefits that could be had. What would be the feeling about maybe in the, would it be the appropriate place in the CFA or is there a way to document it elsewhere? If the primary place of business is registered as Oregon, could there be a stipulation that for the first five years or at some phase, we the locate it's intended that we will be locating the headquarters in Washington, like sure. some sort of balance of... Sure. You can, it's my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, Chuck, we can have the office located in either state and we can move it as frequently as we want to. That's, yeah, and I've talked to Steve about that and that's correct. Or, yeah, Steve, excuse me. Like, are there any thoughts on that? I do feel like, and even just seeing um, Mayor Kiewit's comment in that thread, I think some of my thinking is not just about potentially some sales tax generated benefits, but also the importance symbolically of seeing some part of this physically presenting itself in Washington and truly separated from Port Land, Port Landing, Oregon. Um, Steve, is there any issues with putting something like that in the CFA that the first five years, or is that something better done outside as like a first motion of the group? Um. I don't know. Uh, it's Steve Siegel. I'm sorry. Um, I, what I was thinking about is something like this. I, what, what I don't want to do is to, um, and I don't, I don't, I'm trying to think if it would be legal or not under the statutes, and I'm, I can't tell you right now. But what I'm concerned about is, um, not giving that uh, that decision to the board of this new authority because it has you know the exclusive uh, <clears throat> uh, authority to to to, to manage the, the by state bridge authority and uh, under the statutes the CFA is not permitted uh, to uh, limit or inhibit that authority. <clears throat> that said, what I think we could do, and maybe even a couple of options, 
uh, is to uh, require the the bridge commission to uh, come up with uh, a um, a rule about how they're going to um, ensure that they're operating in both Oregon and Washington and uh, require that uh, that uh, they provide that rule for public co to comment to each of the jurisdictions uh, before enacting it. So, so that, Steve, would, yeah, that Steve, would give them a requirement. Steve, let me, let me jump, jump in, Steve, time out. Why couldn't we, you know, the, this new authority is gonna be making all these kinds of decisions. From this body's point of view, we could put together a suggestion to them that says, when you get on board and we're doing the transition over to them, we as a committee suggest that for the first period of time, you decide year, two years, five years, that you strongly consider having the office being over in uh, on the Washington side. And then, then it's your decision how often you wanna bring it back and forth or if you wanna bring it back and forth, it's your call. But don't force it in a CFA. That's part of their responsibility. But we can certainly make a strong recommendation. Can someone remind me the issue here? So I thought the the, the argument for putting offices in Washington would be for employment, um, uh, you know, generating jobs, and and uh, but what's the what's the sales tax implications? Well, so I thought it was material where the material is delivered, but it's not necessarily yeah. delivered at the headquarters. Right. Yeah, the, the office being there doesn't impact the sales tax. Okay, it's where it's delivered. So, in the RFP or in the procurement process of the RFP, we could make some stipulations of deliveries or where staging areas could be, which would maybe push deliveries to be in Washington and Oregon both. Um, so, I think that would be the place for us to talk about that to be able to get to make sure everything just doesn't get delivered to Oregon or vice versa. That there was some language in there of setting up staging yards on both sides. But the way I understand the sales taxes, it's where it's delivered. Yeah, that's, that's where the money is. It's not. Yeah, it's you, that you address when you're purchasing public. of like where it's coming. And so, yeah, my understanding has always been that the construction, whether both Washington will see some sales tax from the construction out of necessity, because there's just the materials will make sense to deliver some of those to the Washington side if that's where they're needing to be accessed. So it's more about that residual sales tax over the years, even before construction's underway, of just whatever purchases are happening at that office that need to maintain the authority, those are dollars that can be going into Klickitat County versus Hood River County. And that symbolically, that's reinforcing, yeah. it's reinforcing to the community in good faith, this is a true joint bi-state endeavor. Even if we're making a decision on primary place of business for very valid reasons that benefit the project for that to be based in Oregon. But I, I do, I guess I'm like, um, struggling with this is the one time where this decision we have some say and so without putting something in that cfa or some sort of strong recommendation how the strongest possible to ensure that i think it will benefit this new authority to be seriously considering and hopefully locating on the washington side because the tolling all these things that we know are going to push buttons and be salt in some deep wounds among residents that is at least one thing that we can all be pointing to and saying there is a presence. Because clearly, I mean, this gentleman, and it's fantastic to see someone from the public coming, but it's also kind of alarming that some of the questions coming up are things that we think should be public knowledge at this point, like pedestrian access. Right. So it's a good reminder that as much as we have done, it's always going to be missed. But a building that says by State, Hood River White Salmon Bridge Authority and sits over at the Port of Bingen or in Bingen or downtown White Salmon, hard to miss. Like, so do we want to make, we could do is I could take an action that I work with Steve to get you a couple recommendations on how that could be done. I, I, then, I would stick with a yeah. strong recommendation. And I think we're going to find, you know, okay. tying the hands of a group that hasn't been formed and that's supposed to have total authority 
I, I think is going to yeah, be difficult, fair. but yeah. but doing a strong recommendation, you give a fantastic argument for it. Um, I mean, I, I'm signing on. So uh, am I. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would say yes, absolutely. Yeah, and when I I, I read sure. I reread um, Steve's uh, report that they sent over, and really I think Marla, this kind of comes down to you because the the BNO tax I think is the only thing that would benefit the city of white salmon directly um which you don't have right now but maybe by the time there's a new bridge you would um so so i think that that's the only thing that is specific to the city of white salmon based on where the bridge ends up um, sales tax yeah we get sales tax so, you, so if so if materials delivered there you do get some sales tax yeah. Yeah. Or similarly, if, if if there's a a yard, if they purchase some SDS property and put a yard down there, materials that's delivered there would have sales tax that Vision would benefit from, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, sales tax definitely would benefit. I mean, we're looking at a transportation benefit district right now, so in a very roundabout way, sales tax over to this new bridge authority, 0.1 percent of that would go directly to transportation projects in White Salmon if they were actually located there. So. You know, and I think Kevin's, you know, his background's in small cities too. And so none of these numbers are huge. And I realize working on other projects, it might seem like a tiny sticking point, but small dollars are really significant in our communities of our size. And so I think it is just that sense of if there is a way through a strong recommendation to really reinforce at the launch of this new authority, respecting the role and authority that they have, but trying to give a pretty good message that they it would be for many reasons wise, I think, to still strongly consider a Washington. I, I personally would say, yeah, let's put the office over there. But you got to understand that there's not a huge windfall by doing that. I mean, yeah. for the first bit, all you're talking about is office equipment, materials, maybe eventually one or two people that we're going to have to hire. But, but we're again, not talking I think, big money. No, I know. But I, to me, there's this other benefit that's not even about the insignificant it's that, price. Yeah. It's gentlemen like this who all of a sudden are Washington residents driving to the current bridge. But now they see on that route they take every day that there's an office building that says Hood River White Salmon Bridge Authority is in downtown Bingen or by the Bridge Mart or wherever. That is doing more work than any of these meetings or flyers we've produced because that guy and others will drive past it and that's what will register to them mm -hmm. and that's where i think we make chip away slowly slowly at rebuilding some trust of like oh wow that's actually over on the washington side well, like let's well, just ask staff to uh, prepare a, um, yeah. a, a memo of strong recommendation for us on this subject so we can simply adopt it next meeting and move on yeah and maybe what we do too we talk about it when we get there but in june we put kind of a Full court press on to find real estate over on the yeah because so, honestly a so, groundbreaking at, even if it's a, a ribbon cutting at their new offices is a huge opportunity to again catch people who aren't paying attention and reading newspapers okay. to check in on we're gonna have to send you back to mayor 101 school though <laughs> you start with the shovel with the groundbreaking <laughs> ribbon cutting is at the end I just need a vacant office space right now. Okay, Mike, so. move on. We're losing. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hang on one second. I want to add what I have one more question. This is for Steve. Um, so the only other thought I had about the like the where the place of business should be is does it matter? Like in the event, and I know we're planning on the by state group to be running us, but in the event that Oregon doesn't cough up any money and Washington does. And then Washington's like, okay, if we're gonna be the one funding everything that we wanna own them and run the bridge, does it does it screw us up if we say that the place of business is in Oregon? That's a good question. Like to eventually transfer ownership to say like wash dot or something. Yeah. I, it seems to me if 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 Oregon doesn't cough up money, we're we don't have a bridge. bridge. Yeah. It's the truth. So right. then, so then this this entity would dissolve. Yeah, if there's nothing, if there's yeah. no bridge, the entity dissolves. Uh, yeah, and Arthur and I take whatever money we've got collected. And... <laughs> we go to Aruba, was it? Yeah. Or yeah. 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 On the lamb. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, okay, so with right? that, can can we have a kind of a vote? Can we can we declare Oregon as the state of business with a, a strong recommendation to put the office for the first period of time over on the other side? Consideration to the new authority to make that decision for the reasons that um, yeah, Marla, yeah. Thumbs that makes up. sense to me. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. All right. Done. So that checks off one more box on the CFA box, um, which is great. So the last one is getting the final reviews from everyone. The only one that's left is Quick Attack, and I think you're in the process of doing that. Um, Steve is ready to send out a fourth draft, uh, pending any major comments from, from Quick Attack County that would significantly change something um, next week. So if everybody's okay, he's gonna move forward with sending out a fourth version. Um, with the intent then that we would come back to the February 6th meeting with a recommendation that you take that uh, version at that point in time to your boards for approval, barring any something major happening with me now and then. So then each of these boards theoretically will sign it. Yep. So you've got X number Six. of copies coming back in Six. with signatures on it. Is that all we need or do we have to convert it to one single document or? What do we do from there? Steve, will there be one signature page that everyone would sign or can they be six that uh, just get attached? Yeah, I th uh, I think we would want everybody to sign an original. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yes. That could be a media event. See, I'm thinking. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think you should stick huh? to your uh, <laughs> stick to the uh, so stay with Bill and Bridges. <laughs> stick to the same. <laughs> All right, um, yeah. and we will be available to come to each one of the meetings for you know when you get to the board decisions. If you need someone to come, we'll just be available to talk through that as you're doing that with your boards. Um, so is that okay with everybody? Then we'll come out with the fourth version next yep. week, and then. With the uh, hope or goal to have a final version on the sixth, that we make the decision to take to everybody's board. Okay. So repeat those dates again. Uh, the February sixth, we will bring a final version um, to the working group for direction to for it to go to the boards for signature. Okay. And so the idea is to get them signed at the meetings in the month of February. Whatever. Yeah, your first meeting after February sixth. Whatever that might be. So you should make a request to get on our agenda. You can make that request now, even yep. without that done. And that was one of the uh, one thing we talked about is all we'll reach out to each one of you and find out when that meeting is after the sixth and make sure we're on the agenda and right. ready to go for that. Theoretically, uh, Commissioner Fox, we could do that the next day or the quarter of the Okay. Keep going. All right, um, funding, finance, and tolling. Uh, I put in your packet a presentation that was done at the Transportation Commission on the 18th and the 19th. So uh, if there's any questions on that, you can email me or if you looked at it and have any questions now, we can go over it. And uh, the next, uh, when do you have a preference on when they come back to give us an update? Their next big presentation is in March to the Transportation Commission with some recommendations. We thought a meeting, our meeting prior to that meeting would be a good time for them to come in and give us an update on what they're going to present to the Transportation Commission. Does that yeah. sound okay? I would think we'd want to know so okay. that we're not surprised. Okay. We'll make sure that happens. Um, the pending grant submittals, the raised planning grant, we're working on developing that right now. We're working on getting letters of support from the local transit agencies. We've met with Kat McKid uh, and ODOT. Um, we're looking at letters of support from all of them for the, for the raised grant application. Um, that goes in February 28th. Um, and then the remaining grants, they have not come out yet. There's kind of a rough schedule that's in your packet of when they're coming out. They'll be between now and May. So there's four more, five more that we'll be applying for in the next uh, six months. Um, so we'll continue to work forward on those. And then the current grant funding, Brian, do you have your 
No. We gave you a little sheet. <laughs> this out. And what this shows is just what the commitments are and the costs. Is that um, in the package? It's not in the package. We just handed it out. We'll, I'll send it out after the piece. Do you have an extra copy? No, I don't know. They're coming now. So. <laughs> um, it just gives you each grant that we currently have and the funding that's been spent to date against that grant and what's committed against them uh, and then the available funding. So we have about, if, if we spent all the committed funding that we have right now, uh, it would leave us with about eight and a half million. Um, and those the 15 million that we have in those grants. So. so let me make sure I understand how to read it. So where we say remaining commitments, that column, that would be what we've spent versus what we've committed to spend, in other words, through amendments or through contracts. Face value of that contract, when you add those two together, is committed. So Take those two, divide, subtract from the funding amount. That's what we've got available to go spend, correct? No, I think the remaining is what is available. So cost plus remaining is what you've committed by, by contract yeah. or by expenditure. And then what the balance is called available funding there on the right. Okay, so I want to make damn sure I understand this. So let's look at, yeah, I understand. So, um, where are you guys? Which liner okay. is HNTV? We're divided up between the ARPA and the Washington, I believe, both. Um, so if you add, a, if you went across the lines, the five million was the original grant amount. The cost one point three is what has been spent to date. That's what we've submitted. The three point five is the contracted of total contracted amount that we could spend. So in other words, that's through amendment two. Two. Okay. Right. That's the so that's the available funding left on our contract, and then the available funding of the five million at the end of that. Vote, if those two were fully expended, the remaining amount on the grant is the last column. Yeah. So so there's one hundred eighteen thousand dollars right now that we could go uncommitted make an amendment funding. to yes. and add to your contract. Uncommitted, uncommitted funding. Okay. Good. So there's eight point four total of uncommitted funding. And the one reason that we have not, there's a couple of things I wanted to make you aware of. One, the Washington, the reason we're prioritizing that one is they divided it up between 23 and 22. Um, there's a 3 million limit that we need to hit. Well, I'm saying that right way. We, there's 3 million this year, 2 million next year, where there's an opportunity to lose that. If we don't, so we're prioritizing all expenditures we can against that. Um, and then the build grant, we have not been trained by FHWA yet on how to do their invoicing system. So they are working on getting that scheduled. Um, and then we can start using the build grant. That's the reason we haven't done anything on the build grant today. So I kind of big picture. I thought we were taking that roughly $8.4 million and that would help us start a commitment on a progressive design build. It will help us to put together the RFP and the RFQ. Um, without the 75 million getting funded and this by and next, we're going we to have a project. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's right. Because this eight and a half covers into the next fiscal year for some of your costs that you're going to have as well. Correct. Okay, yeah. So the key thing is we can get the RFP built and ready to go, but we can't award it to anybody without additional funds. I, yeah, I mean, I don't even know if we go out with an advertisement if right. we don't get the Washington model. Right. And that's kind of the one important Washington piece. So can you talk about the bottom then current commitment status? There's the contract, and then there's the term earned. Earned is not currently expended, is it? Earned, yes. Yeah. So for like WSP is earned is what they have already spent. So we've spent 3.7, 3.3 million on WSP. Yes, under okay. it, yes. Okay, right. but h and TV only spent 844 so far. That's correct. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And we'll produce this report on a regular monthly basis or one similar. Thank you. This. Um, thanks. Thanks for putting this remaining commitment on here because that's, we got to be looking at those two columns to really figure out how many more checks we can write. One thing that's not on here in the numbers, like 
<laughs> guy over here doesn't like this report because there's, and you probably know this too. There's a PCE number that's kind of like the plan number against the 503 that's not on here that really just makes everybody's head spin that he really wants on here that we'll have. But um, we're, we'll, that'll be on the next version. You'll see where we are versus the PCE and the, the 503 and the actual budget of the project. Um, so that it gives you kind of that complete picture of our things. So this is just really grant specific um, and a snapshot. Very helpful. Thank you. Keep going. That's great. Um, and it's also somewhat summarized in your packet in words and not in the graph. And we'll start putting the graph in your packet. So it's a little easier than the words. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to skip down to the three tribes. Um, hey, Jacob, are you having to leave? I'm going to go mobile. I've got a four o'clock. Oh, can, can we get one thing before you? Uh, I'd like approval from the from the group for us to go ahead and start working with the, the National uh, Trade Association. We've got an ability to to get a letter into their national meeting in early February in DC, where all the presidents of their various unions will be there. And there's a there's a possibility we could get a letter from them back to us at a very national level that says we support this group. Uh, it may mean that we need to write them a letter requesting this and the commission or the bi-state working group will sign it. But uh, I'd, I'd like to proceed with that if you guys are okay with it. How do we know that there's not more to this? It's the way we write our request. So our request is basically to support, it's our intent as an organization to proceed with this project as a union type project. We would like their support uh, in, in uh, further developing this project, obtaining funds from the federal and the state governments. Uh, kind of that simple. Is there anything... Um, Hidden underneath that, not that I'm aware of. I, mean, I think one way to do that is to say we're going to use a PLA on the project. Yes. But that PLA will be negotiated between the unions and the contractor. We're just going to, I'm oh, sorry, project labor agreement. Um, and that'll, that kind of is similar to that. So we'll That's, just make a note that it'll have a project labor agreement that will be worked out between the contractor and them. And we don't want to get in the middle of that one. Yeah. That that's between the contractor and these unions. This is why I, I kind of worry because I don't understand the import of what you're asking us. So I feel like to do due diligence on something like this, uh, I don't know enough. I think the the key thing is: Do you agree that our intent is to have this be a union type contract? Would I know that? Would Mike, all kinds of. Is you there... only have two options. Yeah, I, I understand. Well, is Mike, is there a scenario where, I mean, it sounds like 90% of the companies who would be bidding on this would be union, but maybe 10% or not. I guess I just feel uncomfortable limiting us like, or excluding a, a group from. Well, that is, that's a valid, valid issue, uh, Catherine, in that when we talk to, what, 10 different companies that are interested in bidding on this, I think the number was very small who would even think about using uh, non-union labor on this job. If it was in the South, there is a tendency in the South to have open shop on the East Coast and the West Coast, especially Northwest is very strongly uh, union. Yeah, one of the other things that that does is helps us with the workforce development. And being able to go through their apprentice pro apprenticeship programs and having them to meet certain goals with apprentice programs and local workforce and uh, even travel workforce. Yeah. Um, so it allows the opportunity for that a little more. And this all makes sense uh, when you're building a bridge uh, as we're planning to with uh, lots of public monies involved in it and, and, and all of that. Um, I don't know what we're committing to if it turns out that that's not the path that we're following. It turns out that it, that were mostly private monies uh, and uh, a different picture entirely in how we fund and finance the bridge. 
Uh, I, well, I guess I don't. Not, that's extremely unlikely at this moment, but uh, until I see the money in the in uh, the, the money coming in and filling up this this sheet, I don't know that this is how we're building the bridge. I think the I issue... guess our commitment to them, to me, we would be changing our contract, right? If we decided, that, I'll say we went P3 and it was all private funded, then we'd have a different contract than we would on Progressive. So we would have different terms in that contract. And then that might go out of the, right. be go away. So I think this com this commitment, or I guess I don't even know if commitment is the right word to use, but this commitment to say we're going to use a PLA is specific to us moving forward funded. with the progressive design build contract. I think you could we say you could weasel contract. it down that it's our intent that this project will be built using a progressive design build type contract. And we expect the contractor to use a PLA, develop a PLA with the effective craft. And I would just see, I would even say that our RFP related to the progressive design build will have stipulations on using a PLA. And then the details of that PLA would be up to them to work out. But if we changed and went yeah. different funding source, then it would be a different contract. And, you know, we completely change the project. And again, it's the intent. It's not the absolute guarantee. I'm good with that. Okay. Okay, so let's hear from Catherine. Catherine, do you have any comment? No, I defer to you guys. Okay, so there's four of us here now. Thumbs up to proceed with this. Okay, there's okay, one, two, three, four. Catherine, if you're okay, we got five. Yep, I'm okay. Okay, we'll proceed this way. You'll again see it here, probably the next meeting, a, a draft letter. Um, requesting your support. We can turn it off if we have to there. If you don't like it. No, I'm okay. some samples of those two, so. Keep going. Uh, so Treaty, uh, Treaty Tribe MOAs, uh, we have a couple things going on. We have submitted to ODOT all of the, the draft MOAs. Um, there's one in your packet, which is the Yakima. The reason that's the only one in there is all the rest of them are just literally right now changing the name of the tribe that we send it to um, because there's a lot of negotiating points in each one of those that we need to have discussions with each individual tribe. As those negotiations start, then there'll be four of these that we'll be looking at and, and tracking. Um, we are going tomorrow uh, to meet with Umatilla to do a project update. Um, there's a number of topics we're going to cover with them tomorrow, but one of them is the, the give them a heads up that their treaty MOA uh, will be coming uh, for their review. And then if you look, when you look through the Yakima agreement, there's a lot of places in there with some blanks. That's because we need to negotiate with them what those, how to fill in those blanks. But we need to start thinking about where our negotiating points are gonna be um, with those. So generally we're looking at trying to do a work zone, a, a work zone safety zone, that's an exclusion zone and compensating for no fishing within that zone, basically. Um, and start at that kind of would be our starting point. So just make you aware of that and that, that that's in there for you to start thinking about. And, and for schedule wise, we're hoping to have those done by May. Uh, we would like to get them out to all of the, we're hoping that ODOT will get them to all of the tribes this week or next week. Um, the only one that's a little bit behind is gonna be Warm Springs. Uh, because we had to go through FHWA to get a letter to them requesting that they have uh, government to government consultation. And um, we have not been able to get a response back from them yet. So we're continuing to reach out and hopefully we'll get some kind of response so we can start having those conversations. Okay. And the reason why we're pushing for May is what we heard is that uh, our grants are being held up by not having an EIS, and we can't get an EIS without having this done too. Yes. So. Um, we do have a letter of support from Yakima Nation. Uh, we are going to talk tomorrow with you, Matilla, about giving us a letter of support. So hopefully we'll be able to get that. And same with some of the other uh, treaty trials. We'd like to get letters of support if we can from all of them. Um, we're also going to talk about the workforce development options with you, Matilla. Great. Um, tomorrow and just find out what's meaningful for them. We don't want to put a bunch of jobs in there that's not the types of jobs they're looking for. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we do something that actually means something. And we do the same thing with the other three uh, treaty tribes. So we got to be a little bit careful because 
we have to get kind of permission from ODOT to go meet with them. So we're working on working that out so we can start doing that in a more efficient manner. But it seems to be moving along. And ODOT's not with us tomorrow, right? tomorrow, right? He is, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he will, he's driving up separately, but he okay. will be there. So tomorrow it's you, me, ODOT, and, and HWA. Thank you. Be there the other item that's on that uh, discussion point is the request for toll waivers on the current bridge. Right. And I did talk with the Yakima, and they don't have any issues with the port granting whatever waivers to any other tribe that doesn't have that explicit freedom of travel provision. So we just, <laughs> before granting that, we didn't want to inadvertently offend either the Yakima or the Nez Perce, and there's their. They said individual members of their uh, tribe might have issues, but the government will. Okay. All right. Um, RBMC, just quick updates on what we're doing. Uh, we did have a kickoff meeting for our progressive design bill, RFP, RFQ, uh, getting that together and getting started pulling all those documents together. Uh, we're going to base it around the WashDOT uh, progressive design bill. Um, but we will have to modify it for Oregon criteria. Uh, so we're working through that. We are using Bill only uh, for the contracts piece. Um, so he'll be helping us write the, the contract. That contract, though, is not under an HDB contract. It's the existing contract that um, the port currently has with him for outside the council. Uh, so I did ask him to put together a scope and fee estimate so that everybody is aware of what that he he has be. been really helpful so, yeah to to us and me personally as we got this contract in place yeah. and I think uh, he's we kind of interviewed him because we weren't really sure what his experience was with progressive he doesn't have directly progressive experience but he's got a lot of CMGC which is very similar and a lot of design build and they have 125 person firms that have got a lot of resources to pull from and. Um, I think that'll be a big help. I just want to make sure it's a, it's a big effort and sometimes shocking in the cost. I think rent spends is like $6 million <laughs> to do the contract. Um, so we just want to make sure everybody's kind of aware of what that's going to be and, and have that discussion. So. One of the big differences between what we did with them, if you remember, we couldn't look at cost for them right. until you got down to the one. Right. Under the new rules, you can do it for the top three. So that's something we're going to be working on. But fifteen percent, minimally fifteen percent of the. Yeah, there's some rules with progressive that are a little different in what the cost that we'll actually be getting. Some of it's going to be setting their. One of the ways that it's been done is you set the profit amount and they submit their profit amount to you, um, and that's what you, you use that as part of the scoring criteria. That's one of the things Washington did. So. Then they're locked into that, and that's what their markup mount is for the rest of the project. So there's some other different fees like that have been done. So we'll, we'll work through what I know we're, we've got meetings scheduled now for progress, but I I would personally like that we set at least one meeting to talk just about that yep. and how we're going to fashion this thing. There will be. That's going to be a big, big, big piece of progressive is how you put together that scoring and selection criteria because it is a little different. Now, you were really involved last time. Do you want to be involved this time? I'm not sure. Okay. We can put you on the meetings. And it depends on when it happens. You want to know. I don't, I don't we know. set up a recurring meeting. until meetings, late right? fall. Yeah, but likely, but I don't know. Okay. I'll just put you on there and when you can make it. Then. Yeah. You'll be at least informed on it. Um, we do have Geotech coming out February 6th. We've got a meeting next week with the port to coordinate that. Uh, the build, One of the boardings is going to be right here in the parking lot, like kind of in the corner. Um, so we'll be marking off some of the parking spots, and, and uh, they're starting on February 6th. Um, so we'll let everybody know when they're out here. We're going to do pictures and all that stuff and make a do some press release and media stuff on that. So, so. Marla can do right. the shovel. Exactly. We'll let, we'll let the shovel. The scissor, she's I'll be cutting a ribbon <laughs> for the shovel. Um, the other one is behind the buildings, this side of the fence, but back in the, in the yard. So we're coordinating with the port to make sure all the space and everything. The other thing is survey. Um, we're out getting some survey information, utility information, property line survey stuff, just making sure we know where all of that is. And then right away for right of entries, um, there's a private parcel on the Washington side. We've made contact with that gentleman. They are asking questions about purchasing that whole piece and, and what the process will be for that. So that will be something that's going to come up uh, probably in the next couple meetings is whether we want to go ahead and start 
uh, having those conversations and moving forward with having conversations about going ahead and going to uh, purchase on uh, the entire purchase. lot. Yeah, that big oak lot. It's uh, no, no, I think it's half an acre. It's on the west side. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's on the west side on the north side of the railroad tracks. Okay. There's a little small you know, piece would, in there. And it's again, I'll bring it up one more time, but think about instead of selling it to him, does it make more sense for him to donate it and take a tax write off? That, that's, we don't give people financial advice. That, that's just money, money, and he can. What I'm suggesting is instead of instead of costing him X amount of money, would he be willing to donate the land? Why not if we can get him to do it? Why not? I, I, it's just such a low probability mm -hmm. thing. I don't. It's like, yeah, I mean, we're going to ask, ask the. Um, the contracting companies to donate their labor materials also. Well, I know some of us are donating labor. <laughs> I guess the one question. And I don't even get a tax write off. I guess the one question, Mike, is do we, uh, is there any risk not having NEPA done before? Well, that's, yeah, there is a little bit. We've got to talk through that. I think as long as it's a voluntary acquisition, then it's okay, but we can't do any kind of condemnation or anything like that when we're still got NEPA going on. Just technically you haven't finalized your preferred alternative. So how are, assuming that he's right and we're going to have to buy it, how do we figure out what the fair market value is? So our right away, and I don't think she's still on, she was earlier, um, she will go through, and she has an appraisal company that will go through and we'll do an appraisal. He'll do an appraisal. We'll probably want to pay for his appraisal. Um, that's typically done. Look at those two appraisals, kind of like any other, and then see where we're at. Yeah. Um, we are scheduled meetings with wash.no.staff staff when, as we go through this progressive design bill because they will own pieces of the project. So WashDOT will own the, the roundabout. Oregon DOT will own the signal that's out here. So they will have a piece of the project and just trying to find out what involvement level they're going to want to have so that we can make sure we're, we're covering all those bases. So um, we're also got a meeting set up on the 25th with the railroad uh, to talk to BNSF about what they're box is going to be for coordinating with them so um there's also a list and i'll go through all these but there's a list of permitting things in here um if you want to look through them if you've got any questions sorry i not think about the acronyms until just now there's a bunch of them in there so if you have any questions on what they are i can get Stuart to explain them to you because he looks going to give you a hundred more acronyms so um but they're in there for your has he started working on breaking down those activities so we can see what's really in there and then start moving them around? With the... We're going to start meeting with him on that. Some of that's going to be permitting is very dependent on one thing has to happen before the next thing, and you can talk kind of time frames. But the starting point, you can't really define the actual date. But I'm we'll just I'm just talking down. about logic yes. activities, so then we know where we can push it. Yep. As we get into the design. Yeah, we talked about that yesterday okay. about getting him to, to do that. Um, and then the NEPA, I gave you an update on the buy-off on the 106. So we'll continue to push that. And you know, like I said, the positive thing is, is they're actually calling and engaging now. So uh, hopefully that will continue. So we haven't that. spent a lot of time on 106 yet. That just feels like that's going to be the next one that goes. Yeah. I don't think so. I, the only thing it's really waiting on is the biological opinion and treaty okay. uh, MOAs to be done. And that's a conversation we had with Nicholas. Yeah, that was pretty much was getting close to being done even before we had H and T V on it. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So it Yeah, but that was X number of months ago and it's still not done. Well, yeah, it, it's the work itself is done. It's just the getting it finally signed has to wait until these other treaty mm -hmm. and other okay. issues. So, so it's kind of sitting there. Okay. Yeah, they're doing, as soon as Roy does the send the Akamal gets their sign off, then they can go to, to uh, SHPO and, and the, I don't remember what that acronym stands for. State That's Historic the, Preservation Office. Yes, so in the DAP. Oregon side and then DAP is the Washington side, you know. Department yeah. of yeah. Archaeological Historical, uh, Historical Preservation. Preservation, yeah. yeah. Um, 
they go, they'll go to them and it's really just kind of formality of checking the box on those. So, um, but it can't happen until this next step happens. So I think we're, we're okay on those. I had a question from your report and then I have to run, but uh, I noticed the mention about the proposed bill and the Oregon legislator getting misdirected over to the I-5 bridge. Was that just a genuine mistake or does that raise some concerns still about how we're messaging this project and making sure, like it was just kind of alarming to see that and gave me some hesitation about going into this whole session in Oregon. Like, was that just what? I mean, all the conversations we, we, we had, you were on the conversation with them. I think it was just an overstate. I don't think there was anything more yeah, to it. I mean, they thought it was, they, they were basically asking us, do you want to come down for the hearing? on the 15th or not we need to know that right away they thought it was going to be the 15th i don't think they knew that that was going to happen at all um i really don't i think it was some kind of an oversight i'll give them one happens yeah again. it happens again yeah i mean it's just it, ha like yeah i usually watch for those kind of things yeah that didn't feel like it was okay like anything okay is that it? Can see if they, uh, the proposed changes or problems people have had with it, how are those being fed into you? The CFA, they're all going through Steve and he's getting those, everything that's been given to him so far, he feels like her minor has already worked through them. Um, I know he got a few from, from Hood River, he was fine with those, he didn't think that would have any major impacts. So um, again, with the then? Yeah, and there'll be a red line version that comes back out with the clean version that shows you all of the changes. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Steve, anything else on that? I think that's what I've heard you. No, that's mentioned. that's that's it. Hey, Steve, did you get the one from us on indemnification? Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Did you get the one from Hood River County on indemnification and yes. sure? Good. Okay. Yes. I couldn't remember if I passed that along or not. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Uh, I think he said next Tuesday or Wednesday the fourth version would come out. Great. But if we're getting closer, I mean, they checked out another box today. So. Okay. Is that it? Okay. I guess we are adjourned. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. We adjourned when we lost the quorum. <laughs> I think we.